as we are continuing uh, our uh, revival on lessons learned from the Old Testament. And this also goes along with our series that we're doing leading up to Easter, uh, where we're also looking at lessons learned from the Old Testament. And I wanted to keep the, uh, this idea, this theme going uh, for the revival this year. Today we're going to look at how God calls each of us to serve Him. And when He does, we should run from His call. Now Craig Larson wrote, in, he wrote in General Patton's Principles of Life and Leadership, General George S. Patton Jr. says, Picking the right leader is the most important task of my commander, of any commander. I line up the candidates and say, men, I want a trench between, behind warehouse 10, make the trench 8 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 6 inches deep. See, he's about as crazy as God telling Noah to build an ark in the middle of the desert, isn't he? He says, while the candidates are checking out their tools from the warehouse, I watch them from a distance. They puzzle over why I want such a shallow trench. They argue over whether six inches is deep enough for a gun emplacement. Some complain that since the trench should be dug by power equipment. Others gripe that it's too high or too cold to dig. If a man is above, man is above the rank of lieutenant, there will be complaints that they should not be doing such lowly labor. Finally, one man will order, what difference does it make what he wants to do with his trench? Let's get it dug and get out of here. That man will get the promotion. Pick the man who can get the job done. God, too, is looking for people whom he can give authority and responsibility. Like Patton, he gives people jobs and watches to see how they respond. Most of all, God is looking for obedience and faithfulness. Today, as we look at the story of Jonah, we are going to learn that we can run, as Jonah did in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarsus. He went down to jo Joppa, where he found a ship bound for the port, that port. Upon paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarsus to flee from the Lord. God called this prophet Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach. But Jonah decided instead of obeying God, he was going to run from God. Jonah not only made the decision to run from God, but he decided to go in the opposite direction of where God told him to go. Nineveh was to the east. Tarshish was to the west. Jonah thought he could escape from God. Many times in our life, God calls us to do something, but instead of obeying, we do just the opposite. Maybe that's because we don't have enough faith in God to carry us through. Maybe like Moses, we don't feel that we're qualified to do what God has called us to do. And maybe, like Jonah, we don't agree with what God has called us to do. But whatever the reason, we decide to run in the opposite direction. But maybe instead of going in the opposite direction, we feel that what we're doing or what we want to do is more important. And we read about an incident like that in Luke chapter 14, verses 17 through, 17 through 20. It says, At the time of the banquet, he set his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first says, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. In this parable, Jesus was speaking about a great banquet that a man had planned. He'd sent out invitations. People had RSVP'd and accepted the invitation. 
But once the banquet was ready, and everybody was told to come in, they had been invited, they all had an excuse not to show up. One person had to go and check his new land, and another had to go and check out his new oxen. They put their jobs, they put their careers before their invitation. And in much the same way, we tell God that we're too busy. That our lives are too full of other obligations to do what he's called us to do. What we're really telling him is that what we want to do is more important than serving him. Well, maybe instead of work, it's our favorite sport or a hobby. Maybe because it's a beautiful day, instead of doing what God has called me to do, I'm going to go fishing. Maybe the big game is on TV and we can't go and do what God has called us to do because then we miss the game. In other words, we're telling God that what we want to do is more important to us than doing what he has called us to do. Or maybe we're like the third person who just got married. We use family as an excuse. Now while I agree that family is very important and we should take time to spend with our families, they should not be used as an excuse for not obeying God. But because we don't want to use, but because we don't want to do what God wants us to do, we use the excuse of my wife or my husband won't let me. We blame it on them. It's not our fault. It's their fault. Or <coughs> my favorite that we have these days never happened in my generation, but my kids got a ball game. I can't do what God wants me to do because i got to take my kid to the ball game. But whatever reason, we tend to think that our family is an excuse not to obey God. But the truth eventually comes out. And it did with Moses in Exodus chapter 4, verse 13. It says, but Moses said, oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. After exhausting all of his excuses, Moses finally admitted that he just didn't want to do what God had called him to do. After exha exhausting all of our excuses, work, our favorite sports, our hobbies, or even our family, what it boils down to is that we just don't want to do what God has called us to do. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh and preach, so he ran from God. The people that had been invited to the banquet didn't want to go, so they came up with excuses. Moses didn't want to lead the Israelites, so he came up with excuse after excuse. We don't want to obey God, so we do the same thing, and we come up with excuse after excuse. Sometimes it's just, we've never done it that way before. But look at Noah. <laughs> He'd never seen rain before, but he still built the ark. Instead of simply admitting the truth that we don't want to do what God has called us to do, we use excuses. Instead of obeying like Jonah, we try to run from God. But God will eventually catch us. Because while we can run, we can't hide. And in Jonah chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, we see it didn't take long for God to catch up with Jonah. It says, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and, sent, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All of the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Jonah boarded a ship. He slipped off to find a place to hide and to sleep. Well, let me ask you, have you ever had something on your mind that kept you from not being able to sleep? <coughs> You just tossed and turned until you had to get up and pray about it. You see, Jonah was so secure in his decision, he was so convinced that he had escaped God's call, that he was not only able to go to sleep, but he was able to go into a deep sleep. 
But God caused the sea to rage. A great wind and a violent storm. And it scared the sailors so much that they started throwing stuff overboard. But that didn't help. So as we continue to read, we find that they found Jonah and asked him to pray to his God. But the storm didn't stop, so they tried something else. And in Jonah chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who's responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Because no one, including Jonah, was willing to admit that they were the reason for the storm. They decided to cast lots. And because God is in control of everything, he caused that lot to fall on Jonah. Caused Jonah to confess that, yep, this is my fault. And then in verses 15 through 17, we read, it says, Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. And this, the men greatly feared the Lord. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah lived inside the fish three days and three nights. That seems like a pretty harsh punishment. Jonah admitted that he was the reason that the storm blew up, so they just threw him overboard in the middle of the sea. But at once, the storm stopped. Now here we can see an important lesson. That even when we use excuses, even when we try to run from God, not only will God find us, but He can use our disobedience for His glory. Even though Jonah tried to run from God, God used this opportunity of disobedience to show others His mighty power. And they praised Him for it. They offered a sacrifice to Him for it. But we must remember that just because God can use our disobedience, that's still not an excuse to disobey. It's because our disobedience can hurt others. Jonah's disobedience could have caused the lives of everybody on that ship. Not only that, our disobedience can hurt us. We look at Jonah. Jonah found himself in deep water. Literally. All along. But God wasn't done with Jonah, so he sent a big fish to swallow him. And that couldn't have been pleasant. Can you just imagine? It's hard to imagine that. But for three days and three nights, Jonah had to live inside the body of this fish. This was an attention getter for Jonah. And in chapter 2, we read that this, this caused Jonah to repent of his disobedience and agree to obey God's call. See, just because we can run doesn't mean that we can hide from God. Because God sees all. And God knows all. When our excuses are not enough and we try to run, God will always find us because there's nowhere that we can run, nowhere where we can hide where God is not already there. So Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him who we must give account. God sees everything. God sees through our excuses. He knows when we will run. And He knows where we're going to try to hide. He sees all. He knows all. And when we try to run from Him, we're going to give an account for that disobedience. No matter how many excuses we have, no matter how far we run, we're not going to be able to get away from God's call. Therefore, we should just obey. Even if we don't understand or we don't agree. In Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah, Jonah the second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. After his first attempt to run from God, 
Jonah was commanded to go to Nineveh. And this time, he didn't try to run a second time. He sent to the man. For three days, he went around the city preaching and calling the people to repent, to turn to God. And then on the fourth day, the king of Nineveh heard Jonah preaching and called the people to fast, to repent, to turn to God. But at that point, something strange happened with, with Jonah. And Jonah got angry. In chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, But Jonah was greatly displeased, displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Oh, Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. When the people repented and turned to God, Jonah got angry. That's the opposite attitude that a Christian should have when somebody accepts Christ. He didn't believe that these people deserved to be saved. He had such a distaste for the people of Nineveh that he tried to run from God. And when that didn't work, he still believed that they were so evil that even a gracious, loving, compassionate God shouldn't forgive them and save them. Jonah knew and understood that God was slow to anger. But Jonah was quick to become angry when God kept his word. Jonah knew that a loving God would not want to destroy a city without giving them a chance to repent. But when they did repent, Jonah got angry. You know, it can be that way with us sometimes, too. Maybe we think that someone is too evil to hear the gospel and have a chance to accept Christ. Maybe we think that someone is too far lost for even God to save them. Maybe we have such a disdain, such a dislike against somebody that we refuse, flat out refuse to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Because like Jonah, we believe if given the opportunity, they're going to repent, they're going to accept Christ. Therefore, we refuse to obey God's call. But God wasn't willing to tolerate that with Jonah, and he's not going to be willing to tolerate that with us either. But in order to demonstrate his point to Jonah, God caused a shade plant to grow one day, and he caused it to wither the next. Instead of getting the point, Jonah just got angrier. And in chapter 4, verses 9 through 11, it reads, says, But God said to Jonah, Do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said. I'm angry enough to die. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend to it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left. And many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about this great city? Jonah was so angry that the people of Nineveh had been given a chance to repent and then repented when given that chance. That he got angry about a plant dying. Well, he sure didn't have his sight set on the right thing, did he? He got so angry about all this. Good things were happening here, people. People were coming to know Christ. Come, people were coming to know God. They were accepting forgiveness. They were repenting of their evil ways. Good things were happening. And Jonah's was mad. So mad, he asked God to let him die. So God asked him if he had a right to be angry about the plant. Jonah never said, yeah, I've got a right to. He just said, I'm mad. But God pointed out that it wasn't Jonah's place to decide who or what lives and dies. 
And in the same way with us, it's not up to us decide, to decide who hears the gospel and who doesn't hear the gospel. Because we're to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody. Especially those that we feel don't deserve it. We're to obey God even if we don't understand His plan. We're to obey God if we, even if we don't agree with what He's called us to do. Because it's not up to us what God calls us to do. It's up to us to obey Him. Therefore, instead of running, instead of making excuses, we should simply obey God's call in life. God sent Noah to preach against the evil in Nineveh, knowing that they will repent. And when God calls you and I to do something, He already knows the outcome. If we try to run, if we refuse to obey, someone might just miss out on the opportunity to hear the gospel. They just might miss out on an opportunity to accept Christ as their Savior. And like Jonah, we're going to give an account for that person. Because God placed them in our lives, and God told us to go and to talk to them. And we didn't do it. Jonah chapter 3 verse 10 says, When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, He had compassion on them and did not bring upon them the destruction that He had threatened. This is why Jonah was angry. He was angry that the people repented and that God in His compassion forgave him. Forgave him. And in much the same way, God may be calling us to serve Him in a way that changes the lives of other people and changes our lives as well. As God called Jonah, as God called Moses, as the Master prepared His, his banquet and invited people, God also calls you and I. It doesn't matter our reason, our excuses, or even if we try to run, we cannot hide from God. God will continue to put storms in our life until we answer His call. God will continue to call us until we simply say, Yes, Lord, and obey. When we answer that way, when we obey God's call on our lives, God will change hearts. Sometimes God may call us to do something that seems impossible. But we should obey anyway. Sometimes God will call us to do something that we don't understand. But we should obey anyway. Sometimes God will call us to do something that we don't agree with. But we should obey anyway. When we stop making excuses and we obey God, even if we don't understand His purpose or we don't agree with His direction, great things are going to happen. Because God always has a purpose for everything He calls us to do. And when we obey, people will hear the gospel and God will change life. <coughs> this morning I ask, are you running from something that God has called you to do? Has called, God called you to do something, but your excuses keep getting in the way? <clears throat> Has God called you to do something that you don't agree with? If so, obey God. Even if you don't understand. Even if you don't agree. Because God has a plan. And he can do amazing things simply when his people obey his call.